Feel good and live your best life with Bloom Health Club. Here's Gail Guayardo. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Bloom Health Club. Uh, the movie Sound of Freedom has opened up the very, very important conversation about human trafficking. It has shined a spotlight on it like I've never seen before. And I will tell you, um, born and raised here in the Tampa Bay community here at WFLA and now hosting Bloom, I've been a part of the effort with a lot of organizations here in the Tampa Bay area that have been on the front lines of a very real problem that's more uh, prevalent than you could ever imagine. And today on Bloom, we were super excited to have Sheriff Chad Chronister um, on Bloom. And now he's joining us on the Bloom Health Club alongside uh, digital reporter and producer Brody Waddell. Sheriff, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. You, you. I'm always a huge fan. I see how intertwined and ingrained in the community you are. So once again, talking about another very important topic. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And Sheriff, this is something that you have been passionate about since the moment you took office and you've made some tremendous changes and strides in this fight. Needed to, we need to become more specialized. I saw the crime becoming uh, pro uh, so profitable that it became more prevalent. And for a lot of different reasons, uh, uh, victims, it's hard for victims to come forward because they're scared they're trafficker. They live in fear. They've been physically, sexually abused. So what we're starting to see is a lot of gangs are going away from drugs as much where there's some stiff penalties and now going into human trafficking, knowing that the human element, this individual as dysfunctional as it is, may not come forward because I know the one person that they can depend on is the trafficker, maybe to feed their addiction, food, shelter, clothing, whatever it may be. Yeah, it's really scary. And I know um, before the Super Bowl came to Tampa, you started to prepare by going to Atlanta to see how they were doing things so that we could be ready here in Tampa Bay. And that's when you really started a huge initiative, which subsequently turned into a task force. Saw that uh, around the country they were making some human traffic arrests. You know, we share intelligence and looking around. But I think the biggest eye-opening experience for me was when the Super Bowl was in Atlanta. It was in, the following year was going to be Miami, and then it was going to be our turn. I'm like, well, this isn't going to happen here. It's, it doesn't happen here in Tampa. So started doing some research, and when I saw that 147 individuals were arrested in Atlanta, and 140 of them were there paying to have sex with a young child, I'm like, okay. And, that, and that's what really started opening my eyes. Saw it again and how successful the operation was when I was down in Miami and knew that we're going to be proactive here. Because we not only had the Super Bowl, we were having the national championship and WrestleMania and yeah. a lot of big events coming here. And then you realize that this isn't always necessarily tied to a big event. You created a task force because you realize this is happening day in and day out right under everyone's noses. And that was, I think, the litmus test. I'm like, let's take a look. Let's do a big operation now that there's no more big events and see, is it just the visitors coming in or is the demand here? Do we need to target demand? And you and I were talking about this earlier. We need to target the demand, reduce the demand. If we can dry up the demand, there will be no need for human trafficking. We won't have to worry about victims of human trafficking. So all the different operations we're doing is to target and reduce the demand. And a lot of this involves, you know, getting on the front lines because a lot of women in strip clubs are not there by choice. There are women walking the streets. They are not doing that by choice. In massage parlors, not by choice being held as human slaves in the workforce, online. I mean, your officers are trained and ready to go wherever they need to be. I, I could sit here until dark and brag on them. They're doing such a phenomenal job. Send them the training, pick some individuals who volunteered, who I saw had a passion for this type of work. And this is what they focus on. There's no auto theft, burglary, homicide. They focus on nothing about, uh, solely focused on reducing human trafficking and, and, and finding those individuals who are so greedy and profit driven that they don't care who they damage to, to make a profit. And they do a phenomenal job. Uh, strip clubs, the entertainment, the adult entertainment, entertainment industry, massage parlors, um, are we, we actually will send undercovers out in the street. We'll, we'll do the, the escorts where they come and try to, um, individuals come deliver dust and they're successful. And our focus is never to re-victimize these women. So we certainly have a great approach to who needs to go to jail and who doesn't and, and, and help those individuals. But I mean, in a past operation we did two weeks ago, we rescued two women out of that operation alone. And that immediately broke down. We told them who they were. They came in thinking they were going to have sex an individual with an individual 
and ended up meeting our undercovers. And then the, the biggest part of it, too, is the Internet Predator Unit. You know, there's a lot of great things that come from technology, but there's a lot of downside to technology, too. Our children have access to a lot more than you and I ever had. So we have to make sure that as parents, we're know, we know and we're, we're editing who they're talking to online. Uh, yeah. Because these people, they're, they're, they're crafty. I mean, they're like a, mm. a dripping faucet. They don't, you know, everyone thinks human trafficking, oh, you're going to be kidnapped. And yes, that does happen. But we're also talking about people that are trained to find vulnerable youth, mm. to find people who are broken, and to slowly reel them in. That's what they do. They will find individuals that are aging out of the foster program at 18 years old. Well, come on here. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll be your friend. I can give you a place to live. Hey, you want a party? Let's have a good time. And next thing you know, they become so overwhelmed. Now they're being trafficked. And let's talk about the story um, you and I were talking about earlier of a, a recent rescue of women that thought they were coming to America for a better opportunity. Yeah, eight women, eight Cuban women came. They paid an individual. Well, let me say they they came here. They had an offer. Hey, come here. We'll help you out. We'll we'll, we'll help you with a better way and create a better way of life. So they get them to Mexico. They come across the border. They're taught. They're instructed. Hey, go up to the border agent. Show them here's the address in Tampa, Florida you're gone to. Here's your ID. They'll give you a court date from a couple of years from now. And then here's your plane ticket. Come to Tampa. They show up in Tampa. They have flowers, balloons. They have the big welcome home uh, sign. Make them feel their smiles. They here, take a picture or FaceTime your family back in Cuba. Soon as that's over, the fanfare's over. They throw the phone away. Here's the phone you'll use. My fact, I'm going to charge you for this phone. Now I'm going to charge you where you have where you're going to be living. And by the way, it, it costs $50,000 to get you here. How do you want to pay that off? If you can't pay that off, we're going to harm you and we're going back to Cuba and we're going to harm your family. So you better start working. They start off with a little uh, of the stripping and the adult entertainment, and it goes right into the, to the human trafficking as they try to pay off. Now imagine paying off the $50,000 on top of they charge them because I, I make the dates. I, I set up the dates for you as a trafficker. I'm charging you gas money. I charge you food. I charge you rent. I charge you with the water that you need to use to bathe yourself every day. So it's almost like this vicious cycle to where they can't get out. And you're going much further now. Now you're, you're, You've already taken this serious with your task force and everything that you've done in the Tampa Bay community. But now you're reaching out, you're getting grant money, you're helping other counties that might not have the same resources that we have here in Hillsborough County. Yeah, it's been phenomenal to see how it's expanded and continues to evolve from having a specialized unit to now working with uh, Attorney General Ashley Moody with her on a strike task force where we have a dedicated detective with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. Some of these other, other some smaller counties don't have the resources to investigate or combat human trafficking. We have a, sh a strike force now, thanks to her, that will go out and will help with this. Even the nonprofits that, that we were talking about mentioning, so many phenomenal nonprofits, they actually now, and one of the biggest obstacles, and I alluded to it earlier, we're trying to get an individu individual to trust law enforcement. Like, make that leap of faith. You're already being courageous to have the strength to come forward to trust law enforcement. Hey, there's a different way of life. You have to trust this. Well, we didn't get very far. So we teamed up with these nonprofits with a lot of individuals who used to be trafficked. Now they come in. They actually sit in on the interview. Sometimes we'll allow them to do the interview and we'll tape it and allow them to do the interview. They trust those individuals. They can come in and say, listen, that used to be me sitting there. Let me show you there is another way. Now let me talk to you. And it's been uh, we, we probably went from from rescuing zero women to 25 in the past year and a half. And it's solely because they have someone they can trust the resources that are available. This is absolutely incredible. I know Brody's kind of keeping an eye on questions that might be coming in, but I wanted to ask you one before we switch things over to him. And that is, you know, a lot of parents and people out there might be thinking to themselves, well, I mean, what is the likelihood of that ever happening? But I mean, you gotta be so careful, whether it's somebody slipping something into a drink on a college campus, whether they're luring your child in, like you said, online, like people who are looking to find victims to human traffic, They'll go to any means possible, and they'll go anywhere to find them. Yeah, they're they're masterful uh, manipulators. So you you alluded to it earlier. There's not a lot of the white van. Someone gets chucked in the van, and it's like movies and, and mm. off and running. We are. It's a process. Uh, they're going to lure your child online. They're going to talk to them at a party. They may drug them. Uh, a 20-year-old that we had in Jacksonville who was down on her luck and living with her parents. 
you know, c- come to Tampa. I-, I-, I promise you a better way of life. Came to visit one time. Man, this is nice. I'm, or, or, I'm telling her parents I'm, I'm making the move. They didn't want her to go. She moved. Moved from Jacksonville to Tampa. It wasn't very long before she had a quota. Now, she had to earn $1,000 a day or she was physically and sexually punished. We had someone, we went back, we're talking about training, how important training is. We had someone that went to Tampa General Hospital. She was being trafficked and she's had fractures, multiple fractures and broken bones before. Well, what happens is she was getting to the age where she wasn't as desirable. So they were demanding even more knowing that their time from her was going to be up. She wasn't going to be as profitable. So they really, really beat her to the point where she had to go to the hospital. One of our deputies showed up and immediately recognized the signs of human trafficking, called her human trafficking squad and re-rescued her. That's incredible. Brody, any questions from uh, people watching or even from you? Uh, Well... No questions on Facebook yet, but I have sort of an interesting question for you. Maybe you know this. What is like the percentage or like the breakdown of like girls and, and people that are brought in versus Florida residents that are pushed into this that you yeah, find? Great question. Not a, not as much international as we as, as we felt. We did in the massage parlors. We did it. We worked a case there and they were being uh, trafficked from China, came in from a boat. Homeland Security knew this individual was trafficking women, him and his wife. Um, they stopped the wrong boat. So the boat the boat came in, and uh, we were able to do an investigation there. The same thing um, in a communist country. We're going to kill your family. This is what you have to do. They were being trafficked, and they had to actually live at the massage parlor because they were open 24 hours a day. Mm-hmm. They didn't get any money. The only money they received was their tip money, and they would send some money back to China, and it almost got to the point where it became so profitable these two individuals were franchising it. They would get up and then the people who were there in charge, like the managers of the massage parlor per se, would make enough money and pay them out and they would go open up another location. But the but the a large percentage, to answer your question, are people being trafficked in Tampa Bay in Florida. Now with Super Bowl, we saw a 15-year-old being trafficked from Texas that came in and we were luckily her second appointment and we, we put a put an end to that and he just got sentenced on a federal level. He'll, he'll never have the opportunity to traffic anyone else. But uh, not all of it's international. A lot of it here is here locally. Uh, and when I say locally, I mean here and throughout the state. And it's individuals, it's ex-boyfriends, it's step, it's step parents. It's, uh, um, uh, again, uh, sometimes biological f- parents. Uh, it was a biological father we arrested and helped up in Pasco County on, on this last case uh, with, a, with a young child. So uh, we're seeing it everywhere. We're, we're seeing it, like we mentioned, in, in some of the boys and girls clubs that people are targeting. Online's a big one. I, I can't tell you if I'm if I said that there's no such thing as being an overprotective parent. And you know, okay, children now want their independence and freedom now more than ever, right? Uh, you there's no such thing as a helicopter parent. You have to know who your child's to your child's talking to online. And then a lot of times we're sitting here and we we talk about young children. We talk about young females. What's young boys too? Uh, our late last operation, and, and forgive me for, for, for this is just so graphic. We had an individual. It was on a dark web, and it was uh, seniors for young boys. And it, we talked about the uh, our undercover was talking about the fact that the child was nine years old, and he said, "How how was a child confirming what's the child's name?" Uh, immediately hit right back, and we said, nine years old. That's too old for me." Oh, so I mean, man. the the demands there. We still have a lot of work to do. We've made some great progress. Right? I'm right? glad we can have these discussions about education, awareness, and prevention. But there's still a lot of work to be done. And sheriff. What I really to respect about your your sheriff's office and, and your team is that you also align yourself with these very reputable charities that are out in the Tampa community providing a safe haven and um, restoring these women and helping them find new lives. That's such a, uh, a, um, an important component, and a, it was a missing component. Even if back uh, two years ago, three years ago, if we could get someone to trust us and we wanted to help them, what were we going to do with them? I mean, I started authorizing money to get them a hotel room. Okay, now what do we do? They need treatment. They need, you know, uh, psychological recovery. They need this respite care. What are we going to do with them? And that's what, you, you know, you you just mentioned it. These organizations 
are critical. They're crucial. They'll come in now and take them and get that immediate respite care, whatever that need is. And it's different for each of us. And in each scenario is different. We'll, we'll give them everything. You rescue a woman, they'll take care of the hotel room. The, the, uh, the females in it that we talked about from Cuba, help them with immigration attorneys, or is it a return home? Um, so one of the ladies stayed here and she had a medical background, but now she wanted to be a cosmetologist. So we teamed up with some here locally through one of these local organizations that came in and was a donor and paid for her scholarship, paid for her schooling. So, uh, you know, we always talk about it's what makes Tampa Bay so special is that there's always people willing to help. It's amazing to watch these organizations and come in and, and help these individuals from young boys to young women to adult women, whatever the, whatever the need is, they take care of all of it. Yeah, the, the support is absolutely tremendous. Any other questions for the sheriff, Brody? Now that you say that, like, what age groups are the most susceptible? Like, what are you finding most commonly? You know, we yeah. see it. We see it. Uh, great question. There's there's two, two answers to that question. Number one, what we're finding is being uh, as protective as we are with the internet and 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 being out with the internet predator unit. We see the 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 desire, and again. This is absolutely horrible. From that 11 to 15, 11 to 16, uh, we had we had a trailer set up, and we had an individual come there, and we had one of our undercover trailers, and they showed up to have sex with a 14-year-old. And we said, listen, her 11-year-old sister's in there. I take the 11-year-old. I take the 11-year-old. And to watch him get so excitement, it's like we, 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 we have a lot of work to do here that we still have individuals like that. Um, so, so it's different. It's, it's different from who they're, who they're targeting online, the, the young people being targeted and then the adults being targeted for, there's a, there's a, there's a different portion of the population who, who will pay to have sex with, a, with our older women. And then down with the, with the young boys, we don't see it as prevalent, fortunately. Uh, but it's, it, it, it's, it's horrible. I stand here sometimes trying to, or sit here trying to find my words sometimes because I don't know whether to scream, cry, or put my uh, hands around someone's throat and not let go. Exactly. Right. exactly. It's so true. I mean, through the organizations that, you know, you're talking about that the community really should support. Like we, um, you know, we had created women on the show today. Goodwill is now getting into the business of helping survivors. There are so many reputable companies, So, or, or excuse me, nonprofits. Yes. But I've gone into strip clubs and to massage parlors because they hand off gifts. Yes. They get information. I mean, they're just trying to let people know that mm -hmm. if this is not where you want to be, We'll take you. And what's so interesting to me is a lot of these clubs, I'm like, how do the clubs let you in? They're like, they don't want women there that don't want to be there. They don't want to be part of that. So they allow these you know, nonprofits to go in and to really get, start making one-on-one -on -one connections. The outreach is critical. You're exactly right. And you've seen it firsthand to let them know. And if you can rescue one person, that's why we all do this. Yes, we want to put the bad people in jail, but we do it when you see that you can have that type of impact on an individual's life, show them that, hey, there's a different way of life and there's people who care. It's amazing. It's amazing. And we've, um, we talk about this all the time. The power of someone caring, the power of love yeah. is just limitless. What can we, Sheriff, as a community do to help you, your task force and these agencies? Be that parent. Be that parent. Know who your child's talking to online. Uh, a, a, along with that, there's is the education and awareness. I don't think we can talk about it enough. I think it's important to know that what are some of the identifying signs? Okay, how would I know if someone's being human trafficked? First and foremost, the biggest indicator that someone's being trafficked, if we're having a conversation and that person's not allowed to answer their questions, if they have to look at someone else every time you ask them a question, hey, and regardless of what the question is, they have to look at them, A to C, is it okay to answer? And B, what's the answer going to be? You're most likely going to be, that's, that's what type of control these trafficker have over these victims' lives when they're not even allowed to answer their own questions. And you'll see them at airports. You'll see them at bus stations. You might see them at a resort. You might see them at some of these large-scale sporting events or concerts. You know, I would just say pass the word around. If you see someone who doesn't have any control of their life to the point where they can't even answer their own questions themselves, there's a problem there. And I'm not advocating to jump in. You know, we're not all going to be right. Jack Ryan here. Let's, let's all get involved. What I'm saying is, see something, say something. Call the call, call the police department. We'll handle it. No one's ever going to get upset. I always tell people this. I'll never get upset if you see something that's not right and you call law enforcement and mm -hmm. it turns out to be unfounded. No one's going to look at you and be like, well, why did you waste our time? We're going to be grateful that you made the call. And the life you save may be someone uh, that's going to be extremely grateful. 
Sheriff, we cannot, we know you are a very busy man. We can't thank you enough for joining us on Bloom and the Bloom Health Club. You might be wondering why health? Well, it's a health crisis because of the mental health care needed for survivors, the, you know, the physical damage that is incurred. So we appreciate everything you do, Sheriff. Uh, we're, we're honored to have you on the show and to ha live here in Tampa Bay. The privilege is all mine. Thank you for talking about such an important topic. Thank you for including me in the conversation. Great. Awesome. Do you need to get out of here right at 2.20 or can we have you for 10 minutes? Was it 2.30? Um, for me, it was. <laughs> for me, I had to bounce. Okay. <laughs> for sure. Well, then thank you very much. And I'm providing her a police escort. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I have to go get her out of here. <laughs> okay, great. So you can find this conversation on our Facebook and at bloomtampabay.com as well as the article that I did sort of breaking down a little bit of the numbers and stuff like that. And thank you very much for being in here with us, Sheriff. Thanks for having me.